All I've been told my whole life is that crime doesn't pay, and also to stay away from scorpions. But then, I met Magda. She showed me that the true path to fame and fortune isn't through discipline and hard work and drive and focus, but rather by slightly inconveniencing your opponents every single turn. Am I saying all this because I'm in too deep and at the constant end of a scorpion dragon stinger? I'll leave that to your imagination. But for right now, let's dive into this $30 Magda the Horde Master Commander Deck Tech. You've been hit by, you've been hit by a smooth criminal. Magda will create a tapped treasure token once per turn whenever you commit a crime. Sacrifice three treasures, create a 4-4 red scorpion dragon with flying and haste, but only at sorcery speed. The way the deck wins is by spamming out treasure tokens and going wide with your scaly horde. Sometimes it's nice to sit back and turn things sideways, and this deck is made for that occasion. The engine of the deck are what I like to call the recidivists, or cards that repeatedly commit crimes. Like Robert Downey Jr., before the metal suit. There are 16 of them in the deck, which means you've got over a 70% chance of finding at least one in your opening hand. I'd say there's 14 that you'd really want in your opening hand though, which still makes for a healthy two-thirds chance. My favorites are the Tooth and Scale of Chiscoria. They cost 3 mana, but with their affinity can be free and can always be cast at instant speed. The Tooth can be tapped to grant a target creature 1 additional power. The Scale, 1 additional toughness. If that target creature is an opponent's, you have got yourself a treasure. Now this barely even counts as an inconvenience, and I'd say that's a good thing. Because if you're in the business of doing crime, the less people look in your direction, the better. There are two lands in this section, Desert and Flamekin Village. Desert will deal one damage to a target attacking creature, and Flamekin Village will give a target creature haste until the end of the turn. At one mana, there is Codex Shredder, Glasses of Urza, Phyrexian Furnace, and Scrabbling Claws. I know I said Tooth and Scale were my favorites, but I relish the opportunity to put some goofy cards in a deck that both don't see a lot of play and are genuinely helpful. Beyond the criminal targeting, the Furnace and the Claws can also be sacrificed for one mana to commit another crime and draw a card. At 2 mana, there is Distorting Lens, Grind Clock, Liquid Metal Coating, Liquid Metal Torque, and Wand of Denial. Liquid Metal Torque is for sure the best of this group, acting as a mana rock and a recidivist. The wand is up there though. If you've got your dragons online and spot a farewell on top of someone's library, I'm putting that in the graveyard faster than Robert Downey Jr. was going through his Happy Fun Time Treats. At 3 mana, there's Spit Flame. There is simply not a universe where this was not going to be included in my budget dragon themed deck. It's 2 into red to deal 4 damage to a target creature. When a dragon enters, you can pay a red mana to return the spell from your graveyard to your hand. And I can assure you, there won't be a lack of dragons entering the battlefield. These last two are more top-end, to keep your resources coming in. Endbringer and Staff of Nin. Endbringer untaps on every player's untap step, with a free tap ability to do a point of damage to any target, a 1-mana tap ability to stop a target creature from attacking or blocking this turn, and a 2-mana tap ability to draw a card. You've got crimes, you've got drawn cards, you've got it four times in a rotation. Staff of Nin draws you an extra card on your upkeep and can be tapped to deal one damage to a target, creature, or player. You always need card draw, might as well package it with a crime. Before we move on, take three seconds right now and subscribe to the channel. 
I'll never be able to repay you for the kindness, but I will be able to offer you more Commander content. I'm the man putting trash up in some other people's cans though, at the work fridge feeling can cope. Including the 16 recidivists, there are 39 total cards that can commit at least one crime. Like Martha Stewart, that definitely did not do insider trading. There's not time to go through every last one, so here are some highlights. Ancestor's Aid, Sudden Breakthrough, and Flick a Coin are double whammies, both engaging in criminal conduct and creating their own treasure token. Other than Flick a Coin, there are five cantrip-type spells that perform a crime and draw a card immediately or at some point in the future. Balduvian Rage is probably my favorite of this bunch, because you can cast it for a single red on an opponent's creature to get your treasure, but you could also pump up an unblocked dragon at instant speed to maybe win the game. Who knows? I love Chef's Kiss in the deck, offering protection for one of your permanents copying the spell and retargeting both the copy and the original spell at things that aren't yours. When this one resolves, I start feeling like a real criminal. Finally, there's some staples. A braid, chaos warp, and shiny impetus that can remove or at least manage your opponent's troublesome permanence. If it's growing on trees, I'm trying to rake the money up the heat for the cake. I'm trying to bake the money. Only relying on crime to generate treasures is a fool's errand. You need a way to launder, an honest looking front that won't turn any heads. Listen, I don't know. I watched Breaking Bad and they had a car wash, so work with me here. Creating treasures is part of magic that can get really expensive really fast, but there are budget options. You'll find the following cards in the deck, but they can also serve as a baseline budget treasure package for any deck in red. Big Score, Unexpected Windfall, Pirate's Pillage, and Seize the Spoils are a combination treasure plus card advantage, which is wonderful. Strike It Rich and Brass's Bounty are made for opposite ends of the game, with the former getting you started for a single red mana and then some, with the latter able to go mana positive when the game goes long enough. Impulsive Pilferer, Plundering Barbarian, and Stormkiln Artist are creatures that you can add to the list. The Pilferer has treasure in its veins, with an Encore ability that lets you keep harvesting. The Barbarian offers the artifact Hate flexibility, and the Artist can pop off if you've got enough instant and sorceries in the deck to support its magecraft. Finally, I talked about Bottle Cap Blast in the Most Wanted video. Check that out if you want to check in on the in-laws. I mean the outlaws. Now on a deck specific level, Ganax Astral Hunter is a house. When it or another dragon enters under your control, you get a treasure. It's basically taken a note out of our credit card industry and is offering cash back. Diamond Pickaxe and Sticky Fingers are nice when you're playing a deck that will consistently have creatures to target. They feel even better when those creatures are reliably 4-4 flyers, which are much safer to attack with, and with their evasion, much more likely to deal combat damage to players. Megaton's Fate, Hit the Motherload, and Hell to Pay are all fairly new spells that are probably not for every deck, but I very much like them here. Megaton's fate is both a crime and gets four treasure tokens on its own, leaving you one treasure short of two of your 4-4 scorpion dragons. Hit the mother load is kinda cringe because those treasure tokens enter tapped. That doesn't matter with Magda though, because her ability don't care if the tokens are tapped or not. Hell to Pay has the same tapped treasure problem, which, again, isn't a problem here. Also, it's a crime. 
Vault 21 House Gambit is honestly one of my favorite cards from the Fallout set, and I needed to find a home for it. You do some looting, and then you show your hand to get up to 5 treasure tokens. Swashbuckler Extraordinaire is a win condition type card for when you have your dragons in place. It creates a treasure when it enters, but also lets you sack treasures when you attack to give that many target creatures double strike until the end of the turn. There and Back Again is another one that needed a home. Chapter 1 is a crime, which is sweet. Chapter 2 is Ramp, also sweet. And then Smaug appears, hiding 14, count them, 14 treasure tokens inside when it dies. There's also Mines of Moria, Inspired Tinkering, and Young Red Dragon. Call me Daenerys Targaryen when you wanna reach me, and if you feel the love then you can call me Khaleesi. While this is a treasure deck, the payoff is dragons, so that kinda makes it a dragon deck too. I've already shared a bunch of dragon-themed stuff, but there is a handful more. Dragon's Horde is one of the best cards in the deck, gaining a gold counter when a dragon ETBs under your control. You can tap the artifact to remove a gold counter and draw a card, or to add any color of mana. Crucible of Fire is an enchantment that is going to buff the power and toughness of your dragons by 3 and 3. Pumping out 4-4s four is scary enough, but 7-7s seven is a whole nother level. Shared Animosity isn't exactly dragon-themed per se, but it does grow your dragon's power when they attack together. Dragon Throne of Tarkir is a bit of a hassle to get going, but when it does, you can turn one of your 4-4 four four dragons into all your dragons being 8-8 eight eight tramplers. That will make for a very quick timer. These last three are ways to clear the path for your dragons, so 1-1 one, one bird spam can't stop you from winning the game. Barrage of Boulders has that ferocious ability that will make creatures unable to block if you have a creature with power 4 or greater when the spell resolves. War Cadence is a spell I just found out about and became a big fan of. It's an enchantment that you can sink mana into, making it prohibitively expensive for your opponents to block. But also, you can do this whenever, making one opponent unable to block any creatures from a second opponent. The utility is real for your dragons, and the hijinks is the cherry on top. Incite Hysteria is a crime, first of all, which is lovely, but will more than likely clear some, if not all the path for your dragons to take over the skies. Dragon tales, dragon tales. It's almost time for dragon tales. I didn't touch on every card, so if you want to check out the full deck list, there's a link you can find in the description. This is a deck I'm really excited about, and I'm currently constructing it in paper. While I appreciate you tuning into all of my videos, I've not really shared any of my own decks, so I especially appreciate you all for tuning into this one. Alright, that's enough of that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you liked the video, and let me know what I'm missing in the deck. I'll catch you next time for some more monkeying around.